to Cold OD, Shabbat Shalom, and thank you for joining us. This is our Shabbat service. We're so glad you're with us today. We want to, uh, of course, say Happy Mother's Day uh, to all our wonderful mothers out there. Um, thank you for the great job you do, and we uh, bless you today. Yom Ha'im Sameach. Not too hard to say in Hebrew. Yom, try that. Ha'im Sameach. Wonderful. Happy Mother's Day. And we also congratulate uh, all our graduates from colleges, universities, and high schools that have been going on last week and this week. Uh, Rebecca Al Alberg uh, in our congregation, uh, she graduated. And I know there are many others, so we really uh, say mazel tov to you and well done. Uh, may you celebrate and go forward with vision and strength in your next endeavor. Chazak ve'ematz. Strength and courage to you. Uh, and then refuah shlema, health and wholeness, we continue to say to all who are viewing and listening, we thank all of you frontline fighters risking your lives in the ongoing war against the corona villain, as I like to call it. Doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, first responders, those transporting people and food, Scientists, epidemiologists, virologists, researchers working tirelessly to all of you to find treatments and help and find a vaccine. Over 270,000 fatalities now worldwide, or maybe more by the time by, by your time you're listening to this or viewing it. One third of those in the U.S. Uh, still under 250 in Israel and here in Tennessee, that same number, over 25,000, of course, in New York City and many in Western Europe. So uh, we want to speak the blessing we typically do over you, but before we do that, I just felt uh, just to, today, you know, let's uh, say there's a beautiful uh, verse I like to claim, and I want you to claim it uh, as well, uh, Psalm 3, verse 3 or 4, depending on your translation, but thou, O Lord say that, but you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. We trust you, Lord. You're a shield about me. We pray you be a shield about us and the lifter up on our he of our heads. And we're going to, let's sing that in uh, a traditional song, and many of you know it, and then we'll sing it in Hebrew as well, in Hebrew from Psalm 3. Michael's going to accompany me on this. Thou, O Lord, a shield about me, you're my glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O oh Lord, art a shield about me, you're my glory and the lifter of my Blessing over you together. Let's say this blessing. 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech olam shehechianu v'kiyamanu v'higianu lazman hazeh. Blessed are you, Lord, who you've kept us, you've sustained us, and you've brought us to this moment. And Jeff is going to now lead us in the mourner's cottage. Thank you, Rabbi. And as Rabbi said, we've lost over 270,000 worldwide to this horrible pandemic. And we're going to honor each one of them by saying Kaddish on their behalf. It's a praise prayer to God. And we say it even during the most difficult times. Yikadal ve Yikadash Shemei Rabbah Be'alma divrach yirute Be'yamlich malchute Be'chayichon uv'yomachon Uv'chaye t'chol be'it Yisrael Ba'gala uv'izman kariv Ve'imru amen Yeheshme Raba Mevarach, Leol Lo U Meomaya, Yit Barach, Veish Tabach, Veit Paar, Veit Umam, Veit Nase, Veit Hadar, Veit Ale, Veit Halal, Shemei de Kudisha, Berihu, Leela, Min Kolbir Hata, Veshirata, Tush Behata, Nehemata, Tamiran, Beoma, Veimu, Amen. Yehei Shlomaya Rabbah, Min Shemaya, Vechayim Aleinu Vealko Yisrael, Veimu Amen. Ose Shalom Bim Romav, Hu Yaase Shalom, Aleinu Vealko Yisrael, Veimu Amen. And now we come to the Torah portion of our service, and Suzanne is going to read and recite part of the Parsha. I will recite the blessings prior to the reading of the parasha. Baruchu et Adonai Hamvorach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach leolam vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Chamim Venatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Shabbat Shalom Today we are going to do a more which is from uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and I'll be reading verses 1 and 2 and Leviticus is the biblical calendar so if you're curious to know about the biblical feast when they occur, dig into Leviticus chapter 23. Then Adonai spoke to Moses saying, Speak to B'nai Israel and tell them, These are the appointed Moedim of Adonai, which you are to proclaim to be holy convocations, my Moedim. Vayadaber Adonai El Moshe Lemor Daber El Bnei Yisrael Veyamarta Alehem Moadei Adonai Asher Tikra'u Otam Mikra e Kodesh Elehem Moadai. That was beautiful, Suzanne. Thank you very much. And now the blessings after the readings. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Temet Vechaye olam nata betochenu, Baruch ata Adonai, noten ha Torah. Amen. Let's face toward the east, if you would, wherever you are. Face toward Jerusalem, God's eternal city, as we sing the Shema. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu. Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto 
לעולם ועד. ואהבתה את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר Hear, O Yisrael, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love Adonai your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These words which I am commanding you today are to be on your heart. You are to teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Thank you, Suzanne and Jeff. And we're going to turn it over to uh, Summers family, the Mishpacha, <laughs> Summers and Michael, for leading us in some wonderful worship. Shabbat Shalom. We are just excited to worship with you today. It, uh, we are... We are Mishpacha, we are one body, and uh, we just want all of you out there to know that uh, when a part of the body is missing, it is felt, and we desperately miss all of you out there. So please join in with us in spirit and as we worship the Lord. Jerusalem of praise in the earth. worshipers we're not performers and we hope that you guys can stretch out your hands with us today and worship the Lord you know this song is from the perspective of John John in Revelation 5 he actually wept when no one was found worthy to open the scroll and when we think of the scrolls we think Scrolls are dangerous. But he wept when no one was found worthy until he said, Behold, the Lion of Tribe of Judah is worthy. I think he wept because he was excited for the Messianic age. He's excited for the Messianic kingdom. He's excited for the Messiah to rule and reign from the New Jerusalem.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you that your glory, as we have prayed, your glory is in this place. Thank you, Summer's family. And we know there's a battle, I'm sure a battle, especially when you're doing something as a family, you know there is. So keep them in prayer, Lord. We pray you strengthen them, Lord, and protect them from every arrow that flies by day and by night or whatever it is in Psalm 91, Lord. You protect them, Lord, from the missiles, the fire tip missiles of the wicked one in Ephesians 6. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that they, for them hearing from the Lord, bringing the glory, your glory into this place as we worship you, as you said so beautifully. Um, that's my prayer, the kavod, the worship, the weight of God's glory. And uh, we know you can feel it folks, the, those of you that are watching today, and, and we wish you could be with us. I wish you could see this beautiful sanctuary that we're in. Uh, we're going to be starting services soon here. It won't be long, and we long to see you. We know so many of you want to be he here helping and participating, and you will be soon, and we're praying for you, and uh, keep us in, all of us in prayers. I know you are, and it's not going to be long, but we're waiting for the right time. We want it to be the Lord's time till we start assembling uh, together again, as it says in Hebrews 10.25, uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together uh, as the manner of some is, but do so all the more as you see the day, Hayom, the great day of the Lord approaching. And we know that's your heart and our heart. And uh, so we pray now this blessing over our children. We want to say <clears throat> uh, over our sons, we say as parents, wherever you are, say it over your child. Over our sons, we say, Yisimcha Elohim Kephraim Vakimenesha. May God Vaki Yeshua. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh and like Yeshua. And over our daughters, we say, Yisimech Elohim Kesara Rivcha Rachel Velea Vaki Yeshua. May God make you like Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah. Father, bless our children, we say, Shalom. Bless our children and watch over them, God, and protect them and keep them. We thank you for the covering we are as parents, but we thank you uh, that you are the greatest covering for, for our children. Hashem Yeshua. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Simcha, who's, Simcha, who's going to lead us in the Etz Chaim. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you. Amen. Etzchaim, thank you. Simcha, the tree of life, God's word is for all of us. Well, <clears throat> I mentioned I'd be speaking today about the, this Shabbat, about the Messianic kingdom. This may be the first of two messages on it, or it may be, I'll put my water out of sight, or it may be, uh, <clears throat> it may be, we'll see what we get through today. But uh, this is such a beautiful subject, the Messianic age or the Messianic kingdom. And so, Abba, Father, speak to us through your word. Speak to us, open our eyes to behold wonderful things from your word. It's the scriptures are live and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. It's a discerner of the hearts. Lord, thank you for your word. We praise you for it. So speak to us by a Ruach HaKodesh in the name of our Messiah. Amen. The Amen. Well, two beautiful examples I thought I'd start out with about this messianic age and the messianic kingdom as children are looking forward to it. In a little while, we'll, I'm going to show you pictures from this book as well on the uh, what will the world be like. But uh, these two examples of young children learning and preparing for the kingdom of God. And there was a rabbi who noticed one day a young boy playing with his ball. And he said, what are you doing uh, to the boy? And the boy said, well, I'm playing ball with God. And he said, ha, ha, that's humorous. How do you do that, he said. He said, well, I throw the ball up to God and he throws it back down to me. What a beautiful, he's preparing for the kingdom where we're actually going to be able to do things that, you know, in his innocent mind uh, is actually God throwing it back. And then there was a mother putting her daughter to bed. And uh, she said, and she's putting her young girl to bed. She says, honey, she says, don't forget to pray for grandma uh, that she might be able to grow very old with us. Why, asked the young girl. She said, wouldn't it be better to pray that God would make her young again? Well, that's exactly what the Lord will do. Did you know that? He's going to make us young again. And those that we love and that have gone on young again. So <clears throat> the messianic kingdom, and we'll give you the Hebrew phrase of it in a little, in a little while and a couple other uh, phrases, but it's really, as we understand it, a period on earth, as the scripture says, the period on earth where Yeshua, the Messiah, will actively rule as king, right? Melech, king, Melech. That's why it's called the messianic kingdom. The king will rule in the total affairs of humankind, not tolerating injustice, not tolerating rebellion, and it will be for a duration of 1,000 years. Now compare this, I was thinking, to empires uh, you know, that are throughout history. We have uh, the Mesopotamian Mesopotamian Empire of about 250 years. The Egyptian, I believe, is about 500 years. Uh, the Assyrian Empire of 260 years. The Akkadian of 200 years. The Hittite. And uh, actually, I have a chart that someone made up here, and it's called the Histomap. It's 4,000 years of world history. Now, I kind of piece them together. And I know you can read this from wherever you are. Very legible. Can't you read that print? <laughs> Listen, you can't even read it here from my distance. But this is such a fascinating map, I thought. You know, don't you like to think all these civilizations and these, hist these, uh, these empires that have ruled and some have waned and, you know, and, uh, got, and look how small, I don't know if you, you, I'm sure you can't see it, but the United States is only li literally right here on the map. Starts right there, and then, I should have someone help me with this. Starts right here and goes just to there. But it's pretty big right now. But you have regimes like, uh, or empires like uh, the Babylonian Empire and the Persian and the Roman and the Chinese Empire, the Emperor... Now, is China going to get larger? Well, we're not going to talk about get larger than us. But um, this kingdom that we're talking about today, the Messianic kingdom, is going to be over the region of the entire earth, the entire earth, from sea to sea, and headquartered, maybe you didn't know this, it's going to be headquartered in New York City. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I meant Brussels. No, 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 okay. 
<laughs> Mistake again. London. No. no. Okay, where will it be headquartered? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. <laughs> That's right, in Jerusalem. As much as I love Tel Aviv, it's going to be headquartered in Jerusalem, the eternal city. And God will by no means rule the earth alone. Did you know that he will delegate authority and responsibility to many others? Guess what? Guess to who? To his faithful Kiddushim. Kiddushim is the word for saints in the Bible, God's holy ones. Not holy because we're perfect, not holy because we're sinless, holy because of the blood, Dam HaMashiach, the blood of the Messiah, the blood of Yeshua, that he has made us white, he made us uh, holy through his blood and washed us from our sins in Revelation 1.5 in his own blood. And so he is going to delegate this responsibility and authority uh, over cities, it says many different cities, not Jerusalem necessarily, but many different cities. It's, the earth is going to be inhabited. And this is, these are in verses, I'll give you the references, would be Matthew 9, 19, 28, Luke 19, 17, and 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Paul says, don't you know that the Kiddushim, the saints are going to rule uh, over the world, are going to uh, um, uh, uh, actually make decisions over the world? And so that's what's going to happen. Um, Yeshua mentions this prior to his departure for heaven, after his resurrection, when he says in Acts chapter 1, it says, now while staying with them during this 40-day period, uh, when he appeared to them and spoke about the kingdom of God, Acts 1-3, uh, when he, they gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel, Israel, to our friends that don't, think that there's any future for Israel, that it ended in the first century, and that, that what's happening today has nothing to do with the Bible. I can't imagine thinking that. But sadly, many people, that's what they're taught, and that's, what they, that's all they understand. But he said, they, he, he's asked, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? And he said to them, it's not your place to know the times or the seasons which the Father, Avinu, our Father, has placed under his own control. He is in control, and God's times, my times, you're even our times in Psalm 31, uh, 31, 15, my times are in your hand. Our times are in God's hand. He will determine. In other words, they're asking, will you begin, Yeshua, Jesus, will you begin your reign just like the prophets forecast, a reign that's greater than in the days of David and Solomon? Are you about to start it now? This will be the messianic kingdom the messianic age or the millennium for 1,000 years. And I love Daniel's description. We're going to start there in Daniel chapter 2. I just love Daniel. Ooh, such a meaty book, you know. Uh, and he, in Daniel, the end of Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 and 45, it says, Now in the days of those kings, yeah, you've got to read the whole thing when you, you know, on your own, read it in the whole chapter. But in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom Malchut, a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Nor will this kingdom be left to another people. It will crush and bring to an end all these kingdoms, and we, many believe it's the kingdoms of Babylonia and Persia, Media Persia and all these empires, the Greek, but it will endure forever. For just as you saw a stone, this was his vision, a stone cut out of a mountain, yet not by hands, this is a God stone, crushed the iron, bronze, clay, silver, and gold, the statue that he saw in the vision, the great God has made known to the king what will happen in the future. Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14 and 18. I was watching in the night visions, Daniel says, behold, one like a son of man, Hmm, that sounds like someone we might know. The Ben Adam, the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And that sounds just like John saw in Revelation chapter 1. He approached the Ancient of Days and was brought into his presence. Dominion, glory, and sovereignty were given to him that all peoples, nations, and and languages should serve him. Wow, what a, what a vision. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will never pass away. And his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. But the Kiddushim, here it is, the saints, the holy ones of the Most High, 
will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, yes, forever and ever. Again, the verses we mentioned before, don't you know the saints are going to judge or rule the world? Uh, Matthew 19, as 1 Corinthians 6, 2, and Matthew 19, 28, the faithful will sit with Yeshua on his throne, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, he said. They will inherit 100 times as much as they left to follow him. That's what Yeshua promised his disciples. I'll give you, you'll have 100 times as much. That's a lot. Wow. How is that going to happen? Interesting. Or faithful ruling over cities, some 10 cities, some five cities in Luke 19, 17. Now, when Daniel uses that phrase, everlasting and forever, and by the way, it's in Aramaic, so the words might look a little different than Hebrew. In that, it is, in that uh, this kingdom, he's meaning, is set up in the very world where the enemy powers have exercised their dominion for centuries, blinding the minds of those that believe not. In 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and, uh, and the accuser of the, of the brethren, uh, he's, he's going to set up his kingdom in that very area, that very domain, and it will never be superseded by any other power ever again. So God's ways, I want you to think about this kingdom. I and really want you to think about something that uh, I, I, I thought it was very much in my mind and heart the other day when I was praying and driving. Sometimes you're driving alone and you get the, the you know, certain things triggers and then you get the thought and you start to follow it up. God's ways are drastically different from our ways. Would you agree? Sounds like Isaiah 55. Isaiah said that, right? And... And uh, God's ways are drastically different from our ways, and his new world will be drastically different, drastically different from this one. Things will be reversed, upside down and inside out. The least will be the greatest. Those forgotten and unnoticed here will be recognized and exalted there. Let me give you some passages on that. Matthew 19, 30, Yeshua said, but many who are first will be last, and the last first. Or in 2016 of Matthew, so the last will be first, he said, and the first lasts. Or in 21, 31, Yeshua said to them, amen, I tell you, that means you can bank on this, you can count on this, true, certain, I will tell you, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going ahead of you into the kingdom of God. Now, he didn't mean because their sin is getting them there, but because they were receptive and were willing to change, to let him change them when they came into the presence of God's love and God's power. And, 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 and he said, they're going to get make it way ahead of you because they're responsive to me. They know they have a need. Mark 10, 31, but many who are first will be last, and the last first, says it again in the Gospels there. It's recorded by Mark. It's recorded in Luke, Luke 13, 29 and 30, and they will come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south, and they will recline at table in the kingdom of God. Wow, here's a big meal. What kind of food can you imagine? With him, with, it says, we, uh, it says, let's see, the reclining table in the kingdom of God, and indeed some are last who shall be first, and some are first who shall be last. Isaiah 60 verse 22 says, the smallest will become a thousand, and the least a mighty nation. Hmm, what does that mean? That's going to be incredible. I think of David, and I know you do too, of David in 1 Samuel 16, where he was entirely overlooked by Samuel initially and by his father, but not by God. In 1 Samuel 16, we read when uh, God tells Samuel when he's sending him, I have selected to Shmuel, he says, I have selected for myself a king among his sons, Jesse's sons he's referring to. And upon their arrival, it says, he saw Eliab and thought, this is the oldest of, um, of uh, the sons of Jesse, and he thought, surely Adonai's anointed, is, anointed one is before him. This is the guy. This is the next king. But Adon this is the king. But Adonai said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have already refused him. 
for he does not see as a man as man sees for man looks at what you know the phrase the outward appearance but the Lord looks what on the heart into the heart then Samuel said to Je ask Jesse after seeing all his uh, I believe it was seven sons there or eight seven sons he says all his seven I believe this all his sons he says are these all the boys that you have and Jesse said well <laughs> Oh gosh, now to think of it, now that you mention it, there is the youngest, but he's uh, out with the sheep. He's tending, care, taking care of the sheep. He didn't even think of David. Didn't even think about David in the selection. And the Lord said, arise <laughs> to Samuel. Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Wow, the kingdom of God, folks, is going to be very vastly different from this one. Things will be in reverse. Things will be upside down and inside out. They really will. And so a caution to us and a lesson, a, a lesson to each one of us, be careful who you pander to and who you ignore. They may be just the opposite of who God does. Think about it. We gravitate toward someone that's popular of the celebrities, oh, they're so important. God, it's going to be so different up there, isn't it? And not only up there, but in the kingdom of God. So the messianic kingdom, what's it going to be like? Well, here's a book I mentioned, and I can't read this to you. It's a storybook. It's for children. It's so good. What will the world be like? But let's look at a few of these, mention a few of these. It says, we know that when M M Mashiach comes, Messiah Mash is Mashiach, the world will be peaceful and good. Everyone will be kind and nice. Dad, Dad is teaching his daughter, reading to his daughter, and always do what they should. Everyone will be kind and nice and always do what they should. Will there be robbers? Sarah asked. No robbers, no guns, and no wars. Nothing to be afraid of. We won't need locks for the doors. Hooray, said Sarah. What about me? Will I ever fight with a friend? Never, said Abba happily. All kinds of fighting will end. Uh, he says, nobody will be jealous or want to have more than others. We'll want, we'll want, to have every, want everyone to have nice things, our friends, our sisters, and brothers. All our food, said Abba, will grow to be delicious. The fruits will be so very big, they won't fit on our dishes. <laughs> Cute, no? And then, next one. Uh, no one will be sick or suffer. No one will have any pain. Boo-boos and cuts will disappear and never be seen again. Isn't that great? This is, these are beautiful pictures. We'll meet Avraham Ave Avinu, Abraham our father. Yitzchak and ya Yaakov too, Isaac and Jacob too. Sarah, Rivka, Rachel and Leah, our mothers will all greet you. Your Zadie, your grandpa, your granddad will come back, Abba said, and everyone that we miss. Sarah jumped up and down with joy. My Zadie will get a big kiss. Didn't know you were going to get a bedtime story today. We'll see the third Beit Hamikdosh, the third temple, before our very eyes. It will be bright and beautiful and come down from the skies. Well, could talk about that. Everybody, young and old, will know Hashem or the Lord, the name of God. Hashem is used for the name. Know Hashem or God. We will know Hashem is the King, and all people will thank Him for creating everything. How beautiful! Everyone will know the Lord. That's what the Bible teaches. Everyone will know the Lord, from the least to the greatest. I'm getting my suitcase, Sarah exclaimed. Please help me and hold my chair steady because Abba, when Mashiach arrives, I want to make sure that I'm ready. <laughs> and so we have a, a beautiful story. What's going to happen in, the world, in this messianic kingdom? We mentioned last week seven characteristics of the Messiah, uh, which Harry A. Ironside of Moody Bible Church, many years ago in 19, not that many, but 1940, I love it because he wrote this in this book, 1940, and was so adamant about the rebirth of Israel before it ever took place. And he was just right in the face of those that said, oh, Israel's never, they're scattered, they're never going to be gathered again, God's finished with the Jews. He stated it so clear in the first 
uh, characteristic mentions of, of the Messianic kingdom. I've added a few more in here by this list, by the way, but is the regeneration of Israel. I spoke about that last week, of course, the rebirth of Israel, who will become a blessing to the earth, he says. And we, the Bible says, in Isaiah 60 and 61, and Jeremiah 31 and Zechariah 14, with Jerusalem, of course, as the great spiritual center of the world to which the nations will come. Isaiah 2 describes it will come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house will stand firm as head of the mountains and will be exalted above the hills so that all the nations will flow into it. Wow. Can you imagine? Isn't that going to be amazing? Then many peoples will go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Why? And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. They'll say, We want to learn from the Lord. We're hungry for hearing from God's mouth, hearing his word to grow, and so that we can learn how to walk with him and in his ways. For the Torah will go forth, the instruction from Mount Zion, from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, it says, Isaiah says. Ezekiel 37, remember the story of the dry bones of Ezekiel? There were those stages, the dry bones come together, uh, Ezekiel saw, the, the, and then the tendons come on, the, uh, on the, the dry bones, the bones come together, then the tendons and the skin covers them, and then they were, but says they weren't alive, Ezekiel said. He saw it, he said, oh, but they're not alive. They're still just together. They're just, it's just bodies together. But then, the, 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 there's because there's no breath. Then the breath, the spirit, remember, ruach, say ruach, right? Ruach, come ruach. The ruach comes, uh, the spirit of God, breath enters them, and they live, and they're awesomely, I translate them from the Hebrew, it's, they're awesomely huge and strong. So there's a, a mighty, a mighty people, mighty people. That's the first uh, characteristic of the kingdom: the this, the rejuvenation, the rebirth of Israel, and the the, the life. The war, uh, there'll be a warless world. The warless world, a second thing. Uh, <clears throat> Isaiah two says he will judge between the nations and decide for many people. Yeshua spoke about that, of course, in Matthew twenty four. That the, there'll be wars and everything until this time. They'll beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning knives. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. Isaiah 11.9, that's chapter 2, 11.9, says they will not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Micah 4.4 4 says, with no one causing terror, no terrorism, no terror, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. So international conflicts will still occur, but nations will no longer resolve them through warfare. Instead, nations will submit to arbitration at Mount Zion. The temple will become the headquarters of a divine security council with a membership of one, <laughs> as someone said. That's right. God will make the decisions, and that's it. No warfare. Another point, another third thing, poverty will be abolished. Imagine it, poverty abolished. Micah 4.4, 4, each man will sit under his own, his vine and under his fig tree. There'll be no homelessness. There'll be an incredible agricultural productivity in Amos 9.13. Behold, the days are coming, it's a, says the Lord, when the plowman will overtake the reaper and the one treading grapes the one sowing seed. Wow. The mountains will drip sweet wine and all the hills will melt over. So there'll be a surplus and an overabundance of agricultural produce. No one hungry. None of that. The produce will be so abundant that the harvesting, Amos says, will continue through the time of planting new seeds. Another aspect of this kingdom, this messianic kingdom, changed conditions in the lower creation. Isaiah 65, 25, the wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion and the, will eat straw like the ox, but dust will be the serpent's food. Or Isaiah 11, the wolf will dwell with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the kid. The cow 
um, sorry, the calf and the young lion will, uh, and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze their young ones, lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. A nursing child will play by a cobra's hole, and a weaned child will put his hand into a viper's den. Wow! Children completely safe from danger. No more predators, whether they're not just animals or no more human predators, thank God. And no more victims. This is going to be an amazing, amazing uh, aspect. I saw someone, a picture of a child who was raised with, a, it was either a boa constrictor or a python, an enormous snake, but he was raised, this girl was raised with the snake, and so now the, the snake was actually much heavier than her, uh, and he's, but he's so just, you know, able to, to I, no, don't get me near snakes. I'm like Harrison Ford in Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, you know no, no snakes for me. But, uh, but you know, this girl, the girl was actually was like a pet for the girl. Now, you can't, that's a rare occurrence. But there in the kingdom, can you imagine? It's not going to be rare. It's going to be no danger, no fear for our children being harmed by these. And uh, I believe our dear uh, sister, Mary, my wife mentioned, she said she t said she had some sort of a vision, or maybe recently, or dream, maybe a dream, uh, and her husband, our dear, 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 dear brother, uh, Rob, uh, who went to be with the Lord, she saw him with a lion, and uh, he was a peaceable lion. And we all know, and I'm sorry if I'm doing, I'm totally doing it injustice, because such, I, you know, and maybe she'll share it sometime if God leads her, but uh, we all know, I, I know, I, I don't read a lot of novels, but how many have read, raise your hand over the internet if you, <laughs> if you can, if you read The Chronicles of Narnia by uh, C.S. Lewis, all so those, the team here, the beautiful team here, have read, many have read, and I, those books, Aslan, there's nothing like C.S. Lewis paints Aslan as a picture of Yeshua. I mean, he's such a, such a perfect, there's no better, uh, picture of him, him as the lion of the tribe of Judah, as the lion who is compassionate, mighty, and strong. But, um, but uh, anyway, what a beautiful picture. So it's going to be like that there. Um, and there'll be no sickness or disease. It will practically disappear uh, from the earth at that time. Um, it, there might be some forms of it because of sin, if there's disobedience, if, you know, but, but there's going to, but it's Practically during that time, heaven, it won't be exist at all, but it will probably to almost totally disappear from the earth. Isaiah 33, 24, that says, no inhabitant will say, I am sick. Can you imagine that? Zechariah 14, for those who obey the word, no sickness, no, no diseases, no more COVID-19, no more flu or heart disease or cancer or diabetes or mental illness or any kind of sickness at all, horrible uh, sicknesses. And death will no longer be prevalent, but inflicted only judicially. In Isaiah 65, we, we read, the people will live actually very long lives, live to long ages. So, many believe it will be like Don Eden before the flood, before the flood came, or, or, or before the flood came of Noah, of Noah. And Isaiah 65, 20, no longer will there be an, in, in it, an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the youth will die at a, a hundred years, but one who misses the mark of a hundred must be accursed. That would be a ex total exception. I, we were listening to, uh, my wife and I, uh, uh, a little broad podcast uh, story of, uh, of, of, a young, of a couple, a young couple, that were living are living in New York City throughout the COVID, uh, you know, situation, the Corona villain, as again I prefer to call it, and this young couple, uh, Joe Newman and Anita Sampson. Uh, Joe Newman, they're they're a couple together. Um, Joe is 107 years old, and uh, Anita is 100 years old. And they were a little, she was a little sad because they couldn't celebrate her 100th birthday, of course, with a, with a, a, a you know, group together. But they were so beautiful, uh, you know, and, um, and it's, it, it was, it's a true story. They're actually that age. He was even driving till just recently. So watch out. Uh, but he said he decided because of not wanting to be a danger to others, he'd stop driving. <laughs> he didn't have to. But uh, what a beautiful couple. Um, and she said, you know, because they're not married yet, she, you know, they're, but they're, you know, being with each other a lot and hanging around together. And he said, she said, do you love me? And he said, I guess I do. 
<laughs> no pretense at that age. You know, <laughs> I guess I do actually. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a beautiful story. But what is going to? It's going to be an amazing situation. You know, there'll be an astronomical birth rate according to Isaiah sixty-five twenty-five. The smallest will become a thousand, and the least a mighty nation. Now, why is all this possible? Well, one of the reasons is during this thousand-year period, Satan, Hasatan, the adversary, is what Satan means, Hasatan, the adversary, the one opposed to God, opposed to all that, all that and who rules, has not, has not rules, but has so much power in the earth uh, in these days and causes so much havoc, uh, the accuser of the brethren, the liar, the, in John 8, 44, in Revelation 12, 9, many by second Corinthians deceives the world, blinds the minds in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And this adversary uh, will no longer have any power to deceive the nations. Why? Because in Revelation 20 verses 2 through 4, this ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, Diabolos is the, is the deceiver, and he, he says he's bound for a thousand years. And he also threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him so that he would not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were completed. That's why it's going to be no, there's going to be no tempting devil, deceiver. And righteousness and justice will be everywhere triumphant, everywhere triumphant in the kingdom. Isaiah 32 mentions, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness. That's Yeshua. And princes will rule in justice. Many under him ruling. Then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness will abide in the garden. The result of righteousness will be shalom, peace, wholeness, health, and the effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. Imagine it. Will there be stress in that one thousand, during that period? No, there won't. No one honking their horn at you because you got distracted at the, when the traffic light turned green. Uh, no one honking their horn because they wanted to get in front of you and, and being nasty. No, there'll be no stress, no sleepless nights. It's going to be an amazing time. Quietness and confidence forever. My people will live in a peaceful place, in secure dwellings, quiet resting places. Jeremiah 33, 15, in those days at that time, I will cause a branch of righteousness, a tzamech, a branch, to spring up for David, and he will execute justice and righteousness in the land. And I th I'm going to probably finish, I think I'll finish with this and do a second part next week, but uh, I'll do a little bit more, and then we'll go into it more next week. But you know what? The weight, this is probably the greatest thing to me I, I put, I have to add in. The weight of God's presence will be everywhere. Everywhere. Just like we talked about it was tonight, brought in the weight of God's presence and is, not sorry, tonight, this, this, this morning, this morning on Shabbat. Just like the weight of God's presence will be everywhere. The earth will be filled with the knowing, Habakkuk says, the knowing of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let me repeat that again. The earth will be filled with the knowledge or the knowing of the glory, the kavod Adonai, the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 11.9 says the same thing, so it's twice in the prophets. Just as there's no place in the sea without water, there will be no place on the earth that is not filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Can you imagine that? No dark places. No dark spots in a city or a land full of idols. You can't go to a, a city or I know some of you have traveled like I have a little bit to other countries and where there's so much darkness because of so much idolatry and so many false gods and people that don't know the true living God, the God of Israel, the living one and true God and Yeshua, Jesus, his Messiah, his son, his Messiah. And there'll be no darkness. God's presence will be everywhere. Everyone will be able to know the Lord and, and aware of that. There'll be no blindness. Uh, it will come to pass that before they call, God says, I will answer before you call. And while they are speak, still speaking, I will heal. I will hear, rather. All this, folks, before God closes up the history of this world and then following that messianic kingdom will come the new heavens and the new earth, the heavenly holy city, the new Jerusalem, Yerushalayim Chadashah. It's going to be amazing. It's amazing. 
Uh, can you imagine the musical skill and talent that is going to come to the glory of God that's going to be there? I think there'll be probably scales that we've never heard and harmonies and that don't even know that existed and octaves and it's everything. Can you imagine what God will, will ha- what will be in this Messianic kingdom? Well, we'll continue it with the second part next Shabbat. But Lord, thank you. We look forward to being with you. We thank you, Lord, and that we're going to, we have look forward to an amazing time with you, God. And we pray that we would be like Sarah in this beautiful story, preparing, preparing our suitcase, getting our suitcase. Let me show that picture again, that last picture. Uh, everyone knowing Hashem, here it is. Look, she's got her suitcase ready, her suitcase ready, because she says, I want to be ready for when the Lord comes, for when I can go into, be with him. I want to be sure ready to, to meet the Lord. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready? Are you going to be in that kingdom? Are you going to be uh, a, a one who will, if you're a believer, are you making, preparing your, 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 your life, living in such a way that you'll be one of the ones that will be given responsibility and authority to reign over cities with him? He wants you to be. And things will be reversed there. Things will be reversed. So, Lord, help us to be prepared by living a, a, a life that glorifies you even now, Lord, by living a life that honors you, that puts others, puts you first, and others, uh, thinks of others, not just ourselves, God. Forgive us for when we haven't. Forgive us when we've been self-centered and not self-sacrificing. Thank you, Lord. Help us to live in such a way that we're ready for, have our suitcase ready to meet you and for that wonderful kingdom, messianic kingdom that is coming. If you've never trusted Yeshua, would you invite him into your life? Would you say, Lord, I want to be ready. I want to be a part of your people. And I invite Yeshua, Jesus. Yeshua is his Hebrew name. I invite Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, the Lord, into my life. Thank you for for paying for my sins, for dying to atone for me that I could have forgiveness and a new life and a new start. Yes, you have to humble yourself. The first will be last and the last first. Yes, I had to do it. You have to do it. Everyone has to humble themselves to, to enter the kingdom of God, to be like a child, like Yeshua said. And if you are praying to ask him into your life, to trust him, would you contact us and let us know how we can help you so we can help you and correspond with you? I'm going to turn it over to Gilbert now to uh, share a little, little with us. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. And many blessings to all my beloved mishpacha out there, to those that we know and to those that we will know, that sooner or later we'll be able to come back together again and we will be worshiping the Lord as a body once again here at Kolder D. So, like us, tell your friends about Kolder D, Messianic Congregation, on our YouTube page, please. Click the bell and subscribe. And that way you'll know of ongoing programs when they come on. Join us also in corporate prayer on Facebook Live. This format allows a lot of us to focus and pray on major topics simultaneously while music is playing and slides kind of guide us along. Um, you can, of course, just pray and listen to the music. That's fine. But uh, we do this every Tuesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30. We also offer prayer time via Zoom platform. I haven't mentioned this before, Zoom platform on Wednesday night starting at 7.30 and also on Saturday mornings, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m., um, you can pray with this body via Zoom. And um, that is more interactive where people actually get to pray with each other and hear each other. Now to be added to the prayer times, contact Melissa Hensley. And she will get you set up to participate in any of the three or all of the three opportunities. It's up to you. Just uh, let her know. And she's been the one that's been kind of coordinating all of that to get people plugged in through our Zoom and also through our Facebook Live. Join Rabbi Ken in his daily devotional, the Vash Lafi, Honey to My Mouth, Monday through Fridays. Um... Usually he does it in the morning, somewhere between 9 and 10. One day we're going to peg him, and he's going to tell us what time. But um, 
It's a good, it's good. And if you, even if you miss it, you can click back on it later on. It's there and you can watch it. And be, uh, how would you say, be a part of us and get motivated. Get motivated. You're going to make it. We're going to make it through this, all right? Don't worry about the storm. Yeshua taught us about storms, right? He slept through them. That's how he handles storms. He slept through them. We freak out, he sleeps. And remember what Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 says. I'm, and I'm going to break it down for you because I was reading it and it kind of convicted me. And it's, the, it's a conditional statement. I don't know if you realize that. But sometimes we read scriptures and we don't realize God puts us conditions. So let me read it to you like this as a conditional statement. It says, honor God with all your wealth. Okay? And with the first, two parts to his condition. Honor him with all of your wealth. And he says, and with the first of your entire harvest or earnings. Obviously, not everybody grows corn. Okay? Not here, at least, in, in this part of uh, Tennessee. But those who drew, grow corn, please give him your corn. But for those of us who give money, give from your earnings. But he says this, he says, so honor him with all your wealth, give him the first of your entire harvest, then, conditional, your barns will be filled with plenty, your vats will overflow with new wine. Think of that scripture in those terms. And if those people who say, oh, that's, that's not, that's the Old Testament, even though we don't use that word, right? It's the Tanakh to us. But um, for those who do that, well, well let, me, let me give you a book in. It's found in the book of Matthew, and it's Matthew 6, and it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. If you read before it and after it, you're going to notice something. They both deal with worry. You want to stop worrying? Stop worrying. Put your faith in the one thing that never sinks, and that is our faith in Yeshua. Okay? Now, Speaking of giving, we offer two options. And there's going to be slides, and one of them is going to give you the address. It's www.coldod.org forward slash donate. And for those people who know that I don't have to say www, I just say it for the older folk. All right, regular mail, Cold OD, 4117, Hillsborough Road, Suite 103, 203, Nashville, Tennessee, 37215. And I'm going to hand this over now to Rabbi who's going to give us the blessings, and we need blessings, don't we? So don't forget that. All right? Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Gilbert. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sharing that. I hope you do participate in Cold OD in any way that you can, and we look forward again to being with you face-to-face, uh, -face, panim el panim, very soon, together uh, as a mishpacha, as a family and if you've never been here, we'll, we'll look forward to you coming for the first time once, you, once we're meeting. We will let you know. We will communicate. Uh, so just keep in contact with us. It won't be too long. So we pray this blessing together. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmorecha Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichunecha Yisa Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom Beshem Yeshua HaMashiach, Sar HaShalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face towards you and grant you his shalom. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, the ruler of peace, amen the amen. Shabbat Shalom. Have a great Shabbat and a Shavuot Tov, a good week. God bless you.